irfansupermart.com Hello everyone. Going into 2013, what are some of the opportunities in Russia and Imagine Europe? Today we have Julian, the CIO of Charlemagne Capital, an advisory of Manulife Eastern Europe Group of Funds to share with us his will. Hello Julian, what is your view on Russia going into the fourth quarter and 2013? What are the growth drivers? Um, Russia has been a, a laggard market in terms of emerging markets in the last year or so. Um, we, there's been a strong performance in some of the other markets. Um, but I think that Russia has now uh, fully discounted um, any you know, concerns. Uh, I think that in the last year, uh, there have been concerns about the, um, the, the political side of things because of the, um, I guess, concerns of how um, Putin was re-elected and the deal he did to, in order to become re-elected. Um, and I think the other concern that uh, Russia has had has been because of the Chinese slowdown, uh, which has been uh, a feature of all global markets uh, for the last uh, one year or thereabouts. <clears throat> and uh, I think both of those concerns are now uh, less relevant. I think what you're seeing in, in Russia is increasing uh, policy momentum. Um, if you look at what's happening at, at the moment in, in the capital market side of Russia, you've got a, um, a, a stronger, more positive momentum towards capital market refor reform. Uh, they're, they've they've uh, shortening the um, uh, settlement period very considerably to T plus two basis for the big stocks in the first quarter and then for the rest of the market in the second quarter. They're merging the two sto the, to stock exchanges. The MISEX and MTS have come together to be one stock exchange. Because I remember when I lived in Hong Kong a long time ago, they had four different stock exchanges in Hong Kong, and that's now one stock exchange. So same movement is going on in, in, in Russia. Um, there's all, they're also establishing a central uh, custody uh, because cu uh, settlements is rather complicated in, in, in uh, Russia. So again, bringing together something more like a CCAS, as you have in, in, in Hong Kong, um, and uh, another reform has been is the uh, merging of the ADRs uh, with the locals. So it means that uh, you, can, you can trade much more actively in the local market. So all of this is going to give much more liquidity, much more support to the local stock market, which I think is very positive. So that's, that's I think, the first thing. The second uh, element is obviously what's going on in China. And I think because uh, Russia is a big consumer of, um, sorry, a big producer of commodities, uh, for China, um, people have been concerned that China's um, commodity demand is going to be slower, and that's had an impact. But now, um, you know, China is uh, the recent n uh, numbers coming out of China. Um, you know, the sales uh, numbers, for for example, uh, retail sales up 14.5 percent, and uh, home uh, starts uh, sale, new home sales up 25 percent, and so on. I think the Chinese economy certainly is up, is up on a better trend now. And, and so I think that's going to be also positive for, for, for Russia. So I think that the, uh, uh, the outlook, you know, Russia has, has lagged some of the markets in emerging markets, uh, and, but I think that that's uh, is going to change, and I think you're going to start to see a, a better performance um, for, for the rest of this year, and particularly in, into 2013. Which sectors are you in favour of, and which would you avoid? Um, we have a very broad approach towards investing in, in Russia. Um, if you look at it from, from the market perspective, the index is dominated by commodities. Um, you've got uh, oil and gas and uh, materials, um, which together account for uh, well over 50% of the benchmark. We're actually underweight those sectors, because although they are some of the cheapest sectors, they're not necessarily the best businesses from a kind of bottom-up stock-picking perspective. Um, we like uh, the retail sector. Um, uh, there's very strong retail growth because although uh, the Russian economy this year is growing by about 4% uh, and the inflation rate in Russia is about another 5%, so you know, nominal GDP growth is about 9%, but retail sales growth is much higher than that and wage, because wage rates uh, are increasing at a higher rate. So, so the consumption story is a very, is a very good theme in, in, in Russia. And we pay, play that through the uh, um, consumer names. Um, the, the, uh, the, there are a number of uh, retail businesses. Uh, we also play that through the um, broadcasting media uh, names. Uh, we own, uh, for example, one of the listed uh, TV broadcasting companies, um, which is a play on, on advertising revenues. Uh, we also invest in the mobile phone uh, sector. 
Um, and of course, the, another big area, which is a classic kind of emerging market growth area, is uh, the banking sector, uh, where we are exposed uh, as well uh, to, to that play, because the Russia is a very undergeared uh, economy. There's very little um, personal or private gearing leverage, uh, either into retail uh, spending or, or, or to the household mortgage uh, the, um, sector. So. There are a number of areas which, uh, there are a number of ways of playing that, transportation being another area um, where you can, where there's quite a broad, a, a broadening market uh, in Russia. Um, in terms of where we're avoiding, I mean, I guess I, we're not really avoiding any particular sectors per se, but we are, we are underweight the material sector, as I mentioned, and that's partly because um, governance is generally not as strong in those areas as it is in other parts of the, of the, of the economy or in other parts of the stock market. Having said that, because of the, partly because of the capital market reforms, one of the things that's happening in Russia, which I think is quite positive, is in fact very positive, is, is, is that companies are increasing their dividend payouts. And, and uh, you know, particularly at a time with low interest rates around the world, any kind of yield or income you can get is, is possibly, you know, can be taken as quite positive. And so, you know, a couple of examples um, that, we've, that we can see, uh, you know, uh, uh, in one in the, in the gas sector, sector and one in the metal sector where, where you know, companies are, are significantly increasing their dividend uh, payout. So I think even within, you know, the materials sector, which is very important for Russia, uh, you, are, you are seeing uh, an improvement in, in, in governance there as well. Is the Russian market looking attractive from the valuation and earnings perspective? Um, Russia is one of the cheapest uh, markets in the world. It's probably the cheapest market in the world now, actually. Um, and it normally trades at a discount uh, of, let's say, 20% to global emerging markets. But the discount is now actually bigger uh, now than it, than it really ever has been. Um, it trades at a discount of, you know, it trades at a P multiple of less than six times for this year. Um, and of course, with earnings growing next year, it'll be even, even cheaper. Um, and uh, so it trades at a discount of probably 40% or, or more compared with other global emerging markets, so, which I think is, is, is um, you know, uh, rather unwarranted. Um, for f part of the reason I'll, is, is that earnings are growing slower in Russia than they are in other markets, um, and so I guess there is a bit of a discount for, 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 the, for that reason. Um, but I believe that earnings are probably going to be better next year than the market expects. And, and the, one of the reasons for that is that the, uh, the market is uh, working off a um, uh, oil price for Russia of around um, $90 a barrel for Brent crude. And, and the, uh, the oil price is now closer to $110 a barrel, between $105, $110 a barrel. And I think, you know, the oil price, I, I don't have a you know, necessarily a strong view on the oil price, but I think it's going to be well above $90 a barrel. I think it, I expect it to be in the, you know, maybe $95 or even $100 a barrel. And that does make a difference to, 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 to the Russian profitability. Um, so I think earnings are going to probably be, be better than expected. Um, so uh, I think the outlook is, 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 is pretty good. I think you're going to, you, will see, you will see earnings growth. And, and, and the, that combination of a little bit of earnings growth and a very, very cheap multiple uh, means that the you know from a risk reward basis, I think the, the odds are in your favour uh, as an investor in the Russian stock market. Lastly, which other emerging European markets are you bullish on, and why? Um, the other market that we like a lot, of course, is Turkey, which is a a, a big part of the of the of our Eastern European uh, portfolio. Um, it's a, a very different market from from Russia. Uh, it's a commodity importer. Uh, it's a much more of a trading. Uh, market, or sorry, a trading economy. It's much more exposed to the global e economy, but also it has a, a very deep and um, uh, developed domestic demand story. Uh, a lot of different sectors that one can invest in. Um, and uh, although Turkey's done very well this year, it's been one of the best performing markets in the world this year, um, it's partly a reaction to the fact that it was one of the worst performing markets last year. So it's really just playing catch up. Uh, at the moment, and so the, Russia, the, the, the Turkish market is, is, is basically back to where it was two years ago from a, a, an index perspective. Um, and there are a lot of interesting opportunities in Turkey, uh, in, the, in the automobile sector, in the uh, retail sector, in the white goods, the refrigerators and, and uh, washing machines and that, that sort of sector. 
uh, in the financials, uh, not just the banks, but also some of the holding companies, uh, some of the you know, insurance companies, um, and the real estate sector and the construction industry as well. So there, it's, a, it's a very broad market. There's a lot of the different uh, uh, areas in which one can play Turkey. Um, so that's still, I think, from a, from a longer term perspective, is a, is a very good domestic growth story. Um, it's also increasingly dependent from, a, from an export perspective uh, on the um, other emerging markets. So you know, its, it's uh, dependency on developed markets uh, in terms of its exports has fallen from 70% to 50% in the last decade. So it's, you know, it's, it's changing its, its, uh, its customers. Um, the other markets that we like include Poland, which again, is, you've got a strong domestic story there, although you know, it, 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 Poland is not growing at kind of you know, Asian rates of growth. It's still growing at a rate, a rate of growth of, of, of you know, 25 to 3%, which is much higher than that of most European, well, all the, any, pretty much any other Western European country, and you know, including Japan and, and America as well. So, um, and, and it's got a good domestic demand story there as well. We like the insurance companies, the banks in particular, um, and some sort of specialist financial businesses as well. Um, so there are other ways of which we can, we can play Poland. Um, and finally, Romania is an interesting, um, kind of more of a special situation. Um, it's not in the benchmark of the fund that we invest in, but we do have a small investment there as well.